giving that, some of that encouraging, encouraging words. Y'all can see them. Um, somebody give back to me a little while. Okay? So somebody find somebody to do. Find somebody to do. High five, high five, high five. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Your heart, but I know that your testimony is going to save marriages. 
the ones who's right now, the marriage is right now, that's saying, I don't know if you're going to make it, or I mean, this marriage is done broke up in a different home. Yeah. But if you all would just put a share your heart and say anything, you can do that at this time. You may not give it to us. to me prophetically and um, we were divorced at the time and she said I know you don't want to hear this but I see your husband here um, Maurice I'm like <laughs> okay I didn't think we would be married again um, we were co-parenting um, just learning how to co-parent well together but as far as marriage is so far from my head and then for us to be going to the same church together was just like wow um, and God began to soften my heart, soften his heart. He did a work on us individually. Um, we, were, we were divorced for seven years, seven years. Um, our marriage was dead. It was dead. But just as um, Lazarus, God was able to raise him back up, mm -hmm. up again mm -hmm. through believing, God did the same thing for our marriage. Um, so we're, we're proud to say we've been married yeah. for almost two months. <laughs> well, that's two months. <laughs> but I'm so thankful for just every walk of life. Um, God helped me walk out my life because I came from a life of divorce and all that. It doesn't matter where you came from, but I truly really believe like, that once you get in the word, like you said, this word will do, change my heart, change his. And now we're married again. Our family is restored. And so I'm just, I'm grateful. I know I wouldn't be here for God, but God used Ewald. He used our pastors to get us here. So I'm just grateful and honored.
that would be like somebody saying, if I don't go to restaurants because it's always about money. No. Your giving is an expression of what God has blessed you with. Your giving is an expression of you trusting God. Yeah, God, I know I'm, I'm, I'm well, I don't even know the minimum wage is now. It's probably 18 bucks. I don't know what it is now since the post, you know, before the pandemic, it was around eight dollars. Now it might be fifteen. But anyway, you know, wherever you are in the spectrum, trust God with what you have. Some people may say, Well, I can't afford to tithe. No, you cannot afford to tithe. You cannot afford to. You cannot afford not to tithe. Uh, you cannot afford not to give to God. Because if that's who you are, and you say, you know, I love God and I follow God, well, that's part of your spiritual makeup. Because God's a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now, he didn't, he didn't short us either. He didn't give us any discount bargain brand. He didn't give us anything on the clearance rack. He didn't give us anything that was slightly used or dented. He gave us his best. And his best came. And his best died. And his best gave us the best. That we may share the best with whoever comes across our path. So at this time, you, 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 some of us now see if you, my wife has pulled me into, you know, 21st century, 22nd century, where are we now? I don't know. She's pulled me into, you know, texting to give. So I'm a person that likes to either check or <laughs> cash is king. Now I'm, I'm just, no, let me go get the cash, let me go to the ATM and pull out. My wife's like, we're done. I'm like, wait a minute. How is that possible? But now she's she's shown me. I'm, I'm getting it now, man. I'm, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and take it myself now, boy. Look out! I'm gonna force me to be reckoned with. You know, I have to make sure I, I take more time before I send it. <laughs> this is it, right? This is it. So we're good, right? We're good. Yes, we're good. Yes. yes. So, send it. so here we go. If you've already if you, if you sent your money in, if you if you've already given, it's great. If you haven't, if you have it in your hand. If you, we, we have a receptacle where our, our readers can help you with that. But at this time, and you say, Pastor, I, I don't have anything right now. I'm between blessings. That's fine. That's fine. We want you to extend your hand and open to receive. So I'm asking everyone to either raise your phone, raise your hand, and we're going to flow. We're going to flow with this. I'm going to ask everyone to repeat after me. You ready? We good? We ready? All right. You ready? Is your opinion after me? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I have brought from my house, I have brought from my house the holy thing, the holy thing that, belongs to you. that belongs to you. My tithe, my, tithe, my, offering, my offering, my love gift, my love gift all, belongs to you. all belongs to you. I give because I trust you. I give because I trust you. I give because I honor you. I give because I honor you. I give because I love you. I give because I love you. Look down from heaven, Look down from heaven and, bless and bless my family, my, family, my, church, my church, and me. And me. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, increase, increase on, every side, on every side, blessing, blessing overflow. overflow. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen.
revival that we're talking about all this year. And I tell you, um, how should I say this? With this, my husband says a compassion or passion for, for us just to know who we are and what we possess. If you are a believer, and that's what we're more here, I said, what is your, uh, what you hear with your ears? Right there in that song, it is word. We're a friend of God, and he calls us a friend. How awesome is that? That you will never be friendless. I don't care whoever is on this earth with you. You, wonder, you will never be friendless with that, with, with that way we have him. So what I'm going to um, look at on today is, oh, also tonight, 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 I was trying to reference the colors that worked out today. The DCA has their uh, award ceremony tonight. We're so excited for the children. It's 5 o'clock tonight. Anyone, everyone, you're welcome to attend tonight at 5 p.m. So... Ask the question, what are we allowing in our ear day? That's what you yield to. Whatever you allow them to yield to, that's what you become. And I was just thinking, someone shared with me and um, Pastor Tony a few weeks back. They were in their office and they had their home, uh, they were searching for a home, and their home was up on their computer. And someone walked to their desk and saw where the home was and what it was about and all that. And tried to, you know, and her ear was saying to the person that, um, that's not the neighborhood, it's blah, blah, blah. But in her heart, it was, that's for the family. And so as we're talking, whatever is going on in me, and I just say this, I said to the individual, whatever is going on, if God is putting you there, things got to change. Amen. We can't determine, we can't um, make our decisions based on what we hear in the word. We have to based on what God is saying in the word. Okay, what is based on in the world, we have to do it based on what God is saying in the world for you. Yeah. And so I looked at that and I said, it's amazing how the ear gate, you know, the ear that got into the ear gate of her soul and said, you know, wait, 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 what should I do? But no, what does God say? Knowing that we allow the noise to get into our ear gate, it determines our outcome. Right. Good. I'll, I'll share this. Um, I had an opportunity to have a facial done uh, privately in my home. And, as, and my husband was up there with me, was upstairs in our family area. And as we in our family area, he was watching TV. And I thought it was nice. It was cool. And everything's out laid out for me. And I'm ready for this facial. And um, But the person said, I said, oh, I said, this is so nice. She said, it would be better if the music was changed. It was an uh, uh, anime or something he was watching. I don't know what it was. But he's in, when the music, when she turned on, he turned on the spa. It was relaxing music. Everything shifted. I thought it was nice. But like she said, it would be better. What was going into my ear gate? And what I'm going to talk about today is how we can, I, had to, I want to say this um, really quick. Before I go, I will have to write it down, guys, so I won't um, mess up. I heard it last night as I was getting my facial. Um, so how do we um, how do we do partial? Let me go back up, please. Okay, you can't do or give partial and expect to be and receive wholeness. Mm. Catch it's that. Good. It's good. It is. That's the Holy Spirit. You are so good. You can't do and give partial and expect to be to be and receive wholeness. Believers, we must come into alignment with the Word of God and His will for our lives to live and not exist. What am I saying here? Here, we, I, there was a partial. I'm thinking I'm getting a full, uh, the whole package of a private facial, but I was going to get only partial because what was coming in my ear gate was stopping me from receiving the wholeness of the experience. So a lot of times in life, God said, tell us people, a lot of times in life, we just do our partial of living. Yes, we can get up and go to work and we can function as a mom and a dad, but it's partial. What are we putting into our ear gate for us to live and not just exist? Catch what I'm saying. For us to live and not exist in some, what is, how do we do partial?
partial, just like showing up to church. And I told y'all before, we shouldn't just show up to church, we should show up to Jesus, right? Sometimes we show up to church, but be mad at our spouse. That's partial. Just like sometimes we're worshiping and driving that car, and someone get in front of us, and we stop the worship. That's partial. I'm talking from experience on that one. Out the other day, I'm worshiping, coming here to the school, and I'm just loving on the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, hallelujah. And I don't know what it is on 301 just from 12 miles. I'm like, why they drive the way they drive? And it's like they waited for me. I'm coming this way, and they look, waited, and just pulled out. I'm like, why did you do that? And I'm like, how did I leave this place? But I knew that I said, I want to come back into this place of worship. But what I would have did was get partial. Catch me. So sometimes we're doing partial and want to receive wholeness. Catch what I'm saying. As a believer, we should want to have everything that God wants for us. And sometimes it's denying ourselves. It's putting it back of what we think how it should go. It's like the partial. Working in um, wherever you are, and you in your break room, what, what have you, you're, you're doing good, and you say, I'm coming down here and sit and eat my lunch, but you hear at this table, they're gossiping, and you're listening. That's partial. You shouldn't want to have anything because what's going into your ear gate, you hear everything they're saying. Yeah. But yeah, you saw just sitting there. Yeah, you're just sitting there, but you have the power not to allow what to go into your ear gate. When I say allow to stay in there. Y'all just hang with me. I'm telling you, when we finish, you're going to be glad you sat, you sat here. Now, thoughts of evil will come. Words from others, you will hear that we have no control of. Some things we do hear. I'm not saying you may overhear somebody gossip and say, oh, you know, something wrong with me. No, 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 no. I'm trying to listen. I'm saying some things you're going to hear that you have no control of. As a child, you've heard things you have no control of. Things happen in your life that you have no control of. What am I saying? Once thoughts and words come, you have the power to choose them to enter and grow or send them back with the word of God. So what I want to say here as a believer, if you're a believer in God, that's the power you have. If not, become a believer so you can get the power. So thoughts, the thoughts will come. You know, we can't stop a bird from flying over our head. We can't stop it from building a nest. Can everybody agree with that? We can stop a bird from flying over our heads, but we can't, we, we can't stop that. We can stop them from building a nest. And that's the things that thought, like, evil thoughts will come in our life. We say evil things, oh, that's so, No, just thoughts is not God. Will come in our head. We can hear things that will come into our ears. Just God gave us ears to hear. We can hear those things. But we have the power to not let them come in, grow in us. I want y'all to catch this. I'm talking about soul revival. We're reviving this soul, not the living, um, uh, the unrenewed soul is existing. But God is saying that souls wake up and live. Yes, we hear things that's happening in the world. We hear things that happen in the world. We hear those things, but you have the power to speak to it with the word of God and send it back to the pit of hell. Yeah. Um, I heard uh, this. I was rolling through, um, believe it or not, Minister Shawana, uh, Instagram. Y'all, I'm not uh, on Instagram often. I have the platform, but don't use it. Um, but Pastor Dollar said this, when you allow your thinking to be governed by God's word, the course of your life will be set. When you allow your thinking to be governed by God's word, that's what we do in our soul. We got to have it governed by God's word. Pastor Joseph Prince said this. Um, and I, I said, okay, watch what you say. The devil is after your words. He wants to use your words against you. He knows he has no power because the word of life and death is in your tongue. I want to say that one more time. Watch what you say. The devil is after your words. 
He wants to use your words against you. He knows his power. I would say it's limited. Because he has power. God has all power. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. When I saw that, I'm saying this is right on what uh, I'm sharing on today. The power that we possess. The enemy knows it. He does not want us to revive our soul to know who we are and whose we are. But he'll get in in that place and talk to us. And when we begin to talk back to him, guess what? We're speaking words. We agree with him. And he knows when we speak words into the atmosphere, things change. So he's using us. Stop letting him use you. If it's you, he uses the words that we speak against our own selves. It reminds me of, and we, you know, so it sounds simple, stop letting them use you, but growing up in my household, we had a brother that um, didn't make good choices all the time. But he would include us in it, and we'll all at the end get in trouble. And I remember my mom said, we know, we knew it was him, and I always said, she said, well, why are you letting them keep doing that to you? We have no idea. We made up our mind. We are not listening to him. We are not following him. He'll come up with a plan again. He'll be right there. And you know what? In our household, if one got spanked all, I didn't believe in that rule, but that was the rules of the household. Everyone. And he will get his first. And come out, and while we're there in line, and get ours, he's laughing at us. And we still go back with his plan. But God is saying right now, today, baby, you come out today that that's how the enemy would do us. Yeah. He would have a plan for us. And we listen to this plan. It sounds good. And our souls here is saying, okay, and we're talking, and we agree with the plan, and then we find ourselves in depression. We find ourselves with anxiety. We find ourselves with disappointment. And then we come to God, and God restores us in that area. And then the enemy come and whisper another plan, and we do what? Listen. So if we hear what he's saying, and let it take root, we're going to follow. You said follow? We're going to follow after that. So here, he has a plan, but we have to be, our souls renewed to know God's plan for our life. Yeah. Jeremiah, let's think about Jeremiah 29. For he knows what the plans I have for you. And his plans will not do you any harm. His plans are good for us. So why not choose his plan for our life instead of what the enemy is whispering of the plan? But he used our words. He knows how powerful we are to use our own words against ourselves. So one day we get wake up and realize we are tired of getting our bottom spanked. And no more, you're going to laugh at us. And we stop. And that's how we have to get with it again. I'm tired of you using the word, my words against myself. That's good. I'm tired of just going to church, showing up to church, and when I leave, I'm sad. I'm tired of just hearing all this in my ear, and I go ahead and just go uh, succumb to it. I'm tired of just being a mom and not living or being a dad or in my relationship, we are just, um, we're just existing. Mm -hmm. Get tired of it. And only you're going to get tired of it with what you put in your ear. If it's God's word in your ear, you will mirror and say, this is not what God is saying. Yeah. But you see the benefits of what he's saying. If we do this, this is what we'll have. But if I go this way, this is what I have. And God let us know he's a good God. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. And I tell you, tell your soul, soul choose. We're going to choose today. This unrenewed part of me, the way I think, even though I'm smiling, but I'm sad on the inside, I'm going to choose God's joy. Yeah. Come on, wake up, souls. Wake up, souls. Oh, yeah. We're going to choose joy. You're going to choose what God has for you. So I say, ready, set, grow. Yes. It's good. It's good. Let's tell our soul, ready, ready. set, set, grow. grow. You grow soul, you grow soul in God. Let's look at 2 Corinthians um, 10, chapter 10, mm -hmm. 5 through 6. I'm going to do the King James Version. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have it down here. Casting down 
imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and have it in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You have the power to. Let's go ahead and look at it in a uh, uh, Passion Translation. Come to the Passion Translation. We can demolish. This is the power that you possess. You say, I can. I can. Demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed ones. Since we are armed with such dynamic Weapon, weapon, not ah, weaponry. Weapon, come on, um, weapon, weapon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose complete obedience. You gotta choose. One more. There's one more translation. That's the NIV. We demolish arguments and every um, petition that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. We have the power. Now you know what we want our children to be obedient, be obedient to us, right? We have the power to say make them obedient, right? Uh, and all of a this day I know the power that she had to, you know, for us to uh, be obedient to it. And I thought about even like your employees, you want them okay. obedient to your rules and regulations, whatever you have there. So here in us, in our unrenewed self, we have the power instead of self. And whatever is coming, the enemy is coming, uh, just our own self, how we think, or how we, um, we was brought up and all this. We have the power to put that in obedience. Now, have you ever heard someone say, this is me? This is how I do things. This is how I was raised. Then I say it like this. Or I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. That's you. But I'm talking about the you that's being obedient to God. We can, that part that's being obedient, that <coughs> part can get that part who's saying, this is me, this is, how, this is who I am, this is how I do it. If it's not doing the will of God, you can put that part in obedience to what the word of God said. Let's look at 2 Samuel. I'm sorry. Let me go back up to Psalms. Um, Psalms uh, chapter 32, verse 7 in the Amplified. Psalms chapter 32 and 7 Amplified. You are my hit hiding place. You, Lord, protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Just go ahead and bask in that word right there. What God is for you. That part when he said, you surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. And all this you'll be talking about. No matter, you know, it's not when we take it lightly. Everyone in here are different. We all come from different walks of life and how we were raised. Um, what attached to us, uh, what jobs we had, uh, so our stress levels, different things that come in on us. And in that, we don't take it lightly to say, oh, this is what's going on. When I say that, because some depression comes from a deep, dark place and uh, uh, anxieties, all those things. But the good news is, we said at the end of the year, God can heal that place. Amen. That's the good news. So it doesn't matter. If the medic, you have a little medication, if you can God can heal that place. So here, when I saw that about, he surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. So that right there, God delivers us out of all. He 
He would deliver us, whatever it is. And I think about a surround sound. I know it might have happened in your home if you go to the movies. It's a different sound than this. You know, your family knows that surround sound. You go to the movies, and some put the surround sound into their homes. And that surround sound is a different sound. But you tap into that sound. You don't, all the noise is going on, but when you're surrounded by that, what do you really hear? I don't know the different names of the different um, headphones, and uh, they get greater and greater, and they say, oh, these are good because you don't hear anything that's around you. Beats, that's a good name, too. Any other names? Anybody know the other names? Bowls, okay. Even though you have them on your, your head, right? Around your ears, it's around it. Noise is still out there. It doesn't stop. But you tune into what you are hearing. We have that same power. The council of noise of the enemy. What are you putting into your ear game? We have the power to have surround system. When you, I don't have to wait till I can go to movies. And I still don't have it at home. That's what we do. We go to church and say, oh, but it's not at home. Yes, it's at home because we are the church. So if you go to the movies, you have a surround sound, you get home and say, oh, I have to listen to the movie. But no, but what I'm talking about, the spiritual surround sound. It's everywhere you go, yeah. in the car, yeah. cooking, That's working, good. wherever you go. If you tap in, you will have a surround sound yeah. of the word of God to yeah. tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, what to say, how to say it, when to say it. That's the surround sound we should have. Huh? Glory to God. Let him magnify over the unrenewed soul. Glory to God. Second Samuel twenty-two, and this this is long here, but I want to just get to some parts of it uh, in ESV. Mm. You let him magnify over um, the new soul. I'm telling you, it is so. Three o'clock this morning, two o'clock this morning. A same sound came to me that came before. But it came to me before in an unrenewed soul. It came to me before in a healing soul. But this morning, it came to me in a renewed soul, restored soul. So that sound was there. I knew it was happening. But I heard the sound of God. I've been up since four o'clock this morning. But I've been hearing the sound of God. So no matter what the sound is said on my phone, it's not louder than the sound of God. I'm telling you, it works, it works, it works. But if you want to stay there and listen to, it's just like in a car, I'm telling you, with the radio, I don't know who still listens to the radio in the car, but if you listen to the car and it's so static and all that, you're going to turn it off and you're going to switch stations, right? So what is the stations? You're going to switch it. But why sit here and all this static from the enemy, torn and tearing at your soul, yeah. in your ear game? Switch it, baby, with the word of God. And David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and formed the hand of Saul, from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Now, for him to say that, he had to know he did that. A lot of times we're going on what mom and them, daddy and them, everybody said, uncle, or, you know, their testimony. But when you know that you know that you know, you'll stop using somebody else's testimony. Right. And you will experience God for yourself. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge my shield and my and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. He said, I, I want to say, God save me from the violence of my soul. That's good. That's good. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The end of in me. I'm saved from it. For the ways of death encompass me, the torrents and destruction assail me. 
The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death comfort me. In the, my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I called from his temple. He heard my voice and my cry came to his ears. Now, David telling all this going on with him, but I want you to feel in what's going on with you. <clears throat> then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. Spoke with, smoke went up from the nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. I love it. We try to fix it for ourselves, but we just only give it to God. He'll come down. He'll take care of it. He bowed the heavens and came down. He is bowed down to you now, and he's here. Thick darkness was under his feet. He uh, rolled the sheriff. It's just, so go ahead now. I'm going to get down to, and this tell him what God had did for David in this one more time, the brightness. Okay, I'm, okay, uh, I don't want to go on down. It's so good, guys. I know it's long, but the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundation of the world were laid bare. The rebuke of the Lord at the blast of the breath of the nostrils he sent from on high. Go ahead. He rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. You can go on, but what I said earlier, put in whatever's going on within you, in your armory, so things in your life. But I'm telling you, as David did, he called upon the Lord, and he was delivered. Yes. So no matter, you can put it in, no matter what it is. You can, everybody can come in here just the Lord, fill in what's going on in your soul, and we can have a list here. But I'm telling you, it's not greater than Jesus. Hallelujah. It's nothing that he's surprised by. It's nothing that he say, I can't do. God is our deliverer. Yes. Amen. Come on, wake up, soul. Amen. Know who you are Amen. in God. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands. He rewarded me. The Lord come from him. For I kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. No matter how vast it may be, no matter what is going and the voices you may hear from the darkness of your soul, continue to speak to God. Continue to have your ear inclined to him. For all his rules were before me, and from his statutes I did not turn aside. So just sticking with it. One more. But you all read all, okay? <laughs> One more. For you are my lamp, O oh Lord, and my God, and light is my darkness. And the scripture says that God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And his heard words that I hide in my heart. We gotta understand what we have in God. He's a lamp to our darkness. I'm gonna catch this right here. He's a lamp into my soul. So wherever that dark place in my soul, whatever I've been tucked away with, he's a lamp into my soul. And I told you a few weeks back, he will go with you. You don't have to be afraid. Whatever that soul is tugging at you, you're going to close the door on some things. God is saying, I will go with you. He'll shine a light on it. He'll hold you. He'll carry you. He'll forgive you. He'll support you. He will show you who he is. And you can do it because he gives you the strength to do it. For by you I can run against the truth, and by my God I can leap over all. So we need him. All the situations and circumstances in our life, we can't do it alone. David realized that. That's why he's writing a song. This is a song he wrote. We have a testimony as well. We can't do it. God is the same God. He's going to give us the strength to overtake whatever the enemy has planned for you. This God, his way is perfect. I'm choosing his way. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. He's a shield to all those who take refuge in him. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rat except our God? A rock, excuse me. This God is my refuge, is, is my strong refuge, and has made my way blameless. 
So whatever your way was before, and you were blamed, he will make it blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend and bow of rods. You have given me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness made me great. You gave and a wide place for my steps under me, and my feet did not slip. You, I pursued my enemies and destroyed them and did not turn back until they were consumed. I consumed them, I trust them through, so that they did not rise, they fell under my feet. It's more, but I want you to take this I hope you all jot this now. 2 Samuel 22, verse 1 through 2. So in that place of your soul, will you make God your refuge and your strength? He's your shield. He will hide you. You will go back into that place with strength and power. And they have to obey you. Earlier you talked about obedience. It has to obey you. Don't go out on your own and do it. Take the word of God and let him be it for you. So in that place of the enemy's camp in your soul, you can put obedience there. I mean, you can, you can demand that place to come obedient to the word of God. And I would think here, there's so much in that. In that place and making him your refuge, and if you hear how he, um, David, he's talking, but I want you to write your own story here of your soul. But in that place, no matter how bad it got, he stayed with God. He acknowledged where he was at. He's coming to this whole place. And I was saying about our soul, let's not do it partial. We, where we are, we can acknowledge it, go to God. What's partial is, just let it stay there. What wholeness is, is let it be. Becoming what God said. And the, the Paul and Silas, when he was in jail, I thought about them and their place, their relationship with God. Didn't stop. They went to jail being accused, right? They went to jail with people that was accused and did what they did. But when they sung praises to God, I don't know how often a day they sung praises, but I don't believe they were singing praises out of fear. They were singing praises out of uh, pleading to God, get me out of here. I do believe it was a relationship they had with God. And they had a testimony knowing that my God is my refuge. My God is my deliverer. And in this place, they praised God. And you saw here, David said, for God, what he did for him, he shook the earth. And God did it for Paul and Silas. He shook the earth. And when he shook the earth because he heard his praises of his boys, he came down. But not only did he just come down to free them, he came down and he freed all the ones that was around them. Their chains was, uh, yeah. Set free, right? So here, not only theirs, but the jail, everyone there was set free. But what I'm saying, when we get our souls whole, everyone around you, when you call on the name of Jesus, yeah. when you sing praises to him, mm -hmm. everyone around you will be set free. Yeah. Shine yeah. them off. That's what we do. We're not just doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for our children. Yeah. We're doing it for our spouse. We're doing it for our co-workers. We're doing it for the one we go into the drive-through line and they'll treat you right and give you the wrong food. We're doing it for them. Because yes. I've come to a place in my life when I, wherever I go, I'm an atmosphere changer. Yes. Jesus is there. Church don't begin here. It begins here. Yes. And so it is in a restaurant. And they have a bad attitude. But God, you had to place me here for a reason. Yeah. They need to see Jesus. Yeah. Got a friend of ours with a realtor and they said, ah, it's on a Sunday, they're going to have open house. And what did I do? It's a Sunday. You want the church? You better show up and sell the house. Amen. But let me tell you something. They're not, they 
they're not going to be at church. You are the church. Yeah. So when they come in that door, let them come to you. Yeah. The God that's on the inside of you. But if we're just partial, how in the world do we want wholeness? I'm telling you, give your soul to God. Lean into him and let him have everything. Stop just existing. But I'm saying live. Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. But my frustration is you probably said, is she really frustrated? Yes, I am. I know it's your first time, but I'm frustrated with us as believers because I was there. We're just existing. Yeah. Not knowing who we are and whose we are. Yeah. To speak to a mountain, it has to come down. What is your mountain? A mountain of bills, a mountain of my relationship. Whatever the mountain is, even in your body of sickness, we have the power to speak to it. Hallelujah. And it comes to pass. Yeah. It comes to pass. In every situation, it's different. Whatever your power is, if you're going to speak, if you're sick, and say, I'm going to go to the doctor, speak to it. God, give me the doctor that I need. Because God has doctors for us. Yeah. But if he tell you, I'm going to heal you, believe God, he's going to heal you. Yeah. This is his yeah. word. So I have been to the doctor, and I and, and other God's, you know, uh, way of doing it, and I have been where God has healed me. And know that he did it. And I love about when God heals you in your body, there's no side effects. I'm not taking the medicine. You know, I came out of the hospital with all three. I have uh, keloid skin. I mean, you get cut and the skin just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. I had surgery before. And it was horrible. It just kept wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. I'm like, God, I don't want to have another surgery. And I just asked God. I said, I want you to do it for me. And we went by. And I looked. It was completely gone. My doctor told me to go in and take it away. I said, I appreciate that, but I wanted God to do it. And he did that. Yes. I mean, skin that's like smooth to smooth. Smooth to smooth. Okay, fast forward, years, years later, I have a surgery in my arm. There's keyboard skin. Keyboard, keyboard, that's it right there. Okay, keyboard skin. So with that, they had to go back in a second time. He said, don't worry about it, we'll take that. Now that doctor did it, she took it and uh, it grew back. But my testimony is, I know what God can do. It's here. And I choose not to get a surgery. What I'm saying is this, whatever your situation may be, whatever your, how it looks, have a testimony to know what God can do. Yeah. I know he can heal this. It's nothing. It's there. What is it for? Why is it still here? Have no idea. But I know God can do it. Amen. Because he did it before. Amen. And whatever your it is, whatever it may be, we have to know that as a believer, we have the power and authority given by Jesus Christ to speak those things and speak not as though they were. No longer we have to walk around. And I mean, I, this is what I would hear people like if something happened, like, oh, and the prayer, Darrell said this one time he was teaching, the prayer was so scary to him. He heard just like, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. They said they're praying, but they're in fear of praying. Yeah. So what I'm saying is Paul and Saul, they weren't in fear of praising God. Yeah. They knew what God can do. Yes. We have to get to a place to know who we serve. Why do we serve them? We got to know what he can do. Yeah. So when it's time to pray, to be on the same thing, when your soul is renewed, follow God. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I'm coming to you. Seek in your face concerning this. Seek in his face. Seek in his face. Is my, seek in him, your face concerning this situation. I choose to believe that no matter what I see. Did you want to see that? Yeah. Okay. No matter what I see. <laughs> okay. No matter what I see, I choose to believe your word. Mm -hmm. And that's renewing that soul. Taking it from one place to another through God's, God's word. And again, I say... Just don't show up at church, show up to Jesus. Show up to Jesus. Mm. I love the fact that God had already had gave us a song, a song of deliverance. God has given it to you as well. He has a song of deliverance from you, for you. So no matter where you are in your soul, I you can tell your soul to wake up. Renew your soul today with the word of God. Mommy, God. Mommy, 
cover it, that's it, I'm not sure if someone's coming or what have you. Um, my passion and come on this because I was there existing in church. Existing in church. Singing in a choir that stayed on the usher board, teaching some children's ministry, different different titles, but I was existing. Married with children, little children going, getting ready, blah 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 blah, going to have existing. And didn't realize I only I truly opened a Bible when we was at church. I was born into the church, but I knew church as what was taught, right? As my husband said, he was he went to church all his life and then when they Jesus, that's what happened to me. But when the word came alive, it came into my soul. That the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's John 10 10. I come that you may have life and have it more than that. And I sat down in that pew and I thought I said, and everything just stopped. And I knew my soul was here. It's different when your ear hears something and your soul hears it. That's good. Everything stopped. My toddler was right there. My husband's over there, probably ushering or something. And I said, I'm not experiencing this God kind of life that he's talking about. That I come that you may have life, life more abundantly. What does this mean? And then I began to search the word over this word of life. This is in the Bible. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. I can speak to a mountain and it, it has to move. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things because of his strength in me. I don't have to just show the church now. To know, yes, I was a believer, I'm on my way to heaven, but on this side, we can rejoice, we can live. You know, all the things he created, I thought it was on the other side. I was waiting for the other side. Sweet, what, by and by? Yeah, yeah, sweet, by, oh, on the other side. But when I found out that God wants us to experience him on this side, yeah. Yeah. I don't have to weep as others. And I didn't understand, see, I was taught, by being separated, um, um, you're being sanctified, you're, what is that scripture about? Um, I'm sorry? Come from amongst them and be separated. That's where I'm here for separated. So I thought, now I'm on this side of the line, I left that side, y'all gotta stay over there, I'm over here. And I gotta join the ones that's over here, I'm gonna join you because you're on this side. Oh, y'all, look, here's a line right here. So I'm gonna be on this side with you all. We gotta stand like this, we don't wanna talk. We got only talk. That's what I saw it as. But now I see it as I'm on this side to show them the side I'm on to come on this side with us. Glory to God. So in the grocery store, on the road, in your in your community, wherever you are, show them this side. And God is on one side. This is my favorite. Come take pictures. Oh, my best side. We don't. No, no, they God all sides. Show them this side. Right, right. I'm telling you, hey, my soul is renewed. I know who I am. Right, right. And I want you to know who you are right. and whose you are. We can do all things through him. He gives us a power. It's the, and you know what? It should be a place where you're just, I'm so thankful that it's a power that's infused in me, the portal that comes down from him to do what I do. Because I realize I can't do it by myself. And I'm not afraid or ashamed to say it, because he's the one who created me for him to be in me to do his will and his will in his heart. Come on and stand up on your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
with songs. Like just this week, God surrounded me with songs. And I want you to know his word is real. His word is living. His word is true. We just have to believe it. And so maybe if you heard something today, you say, you know what? I don't know what I need, but I just need someone to pray over me. Maybe I can start there. I want you to know we will pray for you. We want your testimony to see my healer, my father. I, I can say that because he is that to me. And I love that that word is that my, my, that's personal. That's something experienced. And God wants you to be able to say, I, that's my father. That's my healer. That's my way maker. That's my miracle. Because of what he's done for you. And he will do it. For you, he doesn't have favorites. You're all his favorites. Yeah, yeah. He wants to call all of you his children. But to be called his child, you got to hear him and follow. Hear him and be obedient. That complete obedience, God is looking for people to hear him and do what he says. And if right now, everything, if you, there's noise, but something in you is saying, come to the front and get prayer. Raise your hand and someone will come to you for prayer. I just, I, I, I beg you to do that now. Be obedient and, and God right now in this moment. You don't have to wait till after. If you want to rededicate and God is saying start new, start over today with me, let's be obedient today. We've all had to rededicate. I, I've had to rededicate. And if you say, you know what, I haven't, I've never been dedicated to God. I, I need to be saved. I need to know him. I, I first need to start from knowing him as my savior. God is saying, hey, be obedient to that today. That's where you start. He wants you to know him as your savior. So that's prayer, rededication, salvation. And maybe you have rededicated and you've been walking out this life, but you know what, I want to I want to just publicly express this to God. I want people to know I and I am I am new. Yeah. And you say, no, I want to be baptized. I want to be water baptized. Yeah. We, we're gonna offer that as well. I know it hasn't been said in, in a while, but if, if you're interested in water yeah. baptism, just that's just showing that hey, I have been renewed. I have God, I was this way, but I've made up in my mind, I've been I've rededicated my life to God and starting over with him. And you want to publicly express what you've done inwardly in your soul, we do offer that as well. You can see me or any of the leaders or anyone from the reader table, um, connect, connect table afterwards if you're interested in word baptism. But right now, I just want to still give a moment. I want to give a moment for anybody who does want um, just that one-on-one -on -one prayer, rededication. Um, Minister Darrell is up here. To pray with you right now. God is surrounding you with a song right now. He's saying you're wanted, you're loved, you're thought of, yes. you're not yes. forgotten. Yes. Yes. I see you, I hear you. Lies may be saying that you're not, but he's saying you're enough. Yes. He's saying I do know the future and the future is good. Yes. He's saying your marriage will work out. Hallelujah. You will be whole. You will experience joy. You will experience peace. We're going to calm down the noise and we're going to amplify what his word says. Yes. So we will pray right here, right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, first we say thank you. Thank you for meeting us in this place. Thank you for meeting me in this place, God. God, we love you, we adore you. We see how much you love us, that you felt that we needed to be reminded, and some of us just woken up in our soul, that you want us to have a, a personal relationship with you. You want us to know that you're our refuge, you're our fortress, you're yes. our rock, yes. you're what keeps us stable, you're what keeps us whole, you're what keeps us grounded. It isn't the sunny days. It isn't the smooth ride to work. It isn't the bank account. It's not the house, the car that you drive. But it's you who is our friend. It is you who is our friend. And my mind and my heart's God. And Father, I just declare today, if anyone does not know that, that this message has stirred something in their soul that they want to know, that you have infused an a overwhelming desire to know this God so that they can declare for themselves that you are my refuge. Yes. You are my strength. Yes. You are my confidence. Yes. Lord, I thank you, God, for the hearts that have been renewed in this place, God. Yes. 
I thank you, God, that it won't be anything overwhelming or seeming too far away, but they will take it step by step, day by day, to allow you to renew their souls, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just hear one day at a time. God will get you there. He's walking with you hand in hand. In hand. God says, this is a walk, Father. We, we were seated right now. We're, we don't, we're not racing to get somewhere. We, we're going to acknowledge, like Pastor Angela said, where we're at today. And we're going to be honest with you in this place, God. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm standing. This is where my thoughts are. This is where my soul is. This is where I hurt. And we say, God, just help me in this place, in this earth, in this situation. I thank you, God, that as we yield our souls to you to show us where we're at, that just piece by piece you're unfolding every lie and putting in new truth, God. I thank you for your word, your, your word of life that, that brings, that revives that, that soul again, that we can remember who we are, the innocence of how you made us. The innocence, back to the innocence of the thoughts where we thought pure and we're not think, uh, thinking of rejection and what we're not, God, but we're thinking highly in what, how you see us and how you, how you speak to us and what your word says. I, Father, I speak that your word will be loud this week on purpose to every heart. It will be loud. Yes. If they can't shut it away, Father, then they just choose to yield and say, I just believe it. God, I believe it. I hear these other things, but they choose to believe your word, God. Yes, yes. I thank you for transformation. Thank you.
Take your shot, sir. Alright, we pray that y'all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I know I'm going to still be up here. If you just want to, uh, someone pray with you in private and I'll just talk. Me and Darrell are going to stay up here for anybody, okay? We love you. Just remember here and every walk of life. Lord, it's about where you're going, not where you've been, not where you've been. Hallelujah. Guys, welcome back. We're so glad to see you guys. We have a few things to offer you while you're here, okay? Number one is salvation. Salvation is something that we offer. It's a deliverance from yourself and the old way of doing things, and you're recognizing and realizing you need a Savior, and God is there to walk with you, okay? Amen, amen. And if you're saying, you know what, I've been walking with God, but I kind of lost my way, and I just want to rededicate my life to him. I want to commit my life to him again. Hey, we offer rededication yeah. with you. There's someone waiting for you on the line. Just drop in the comments that I want to rededicate my life. I want to start over with God. Yeah, yeah. you can do that. And we also have baptism. Baptism is a symbolic gesture for an inward change. It's saying that I'm dying to the old man, and I'm rising to the new man. The Bible says that once we accept God, we are new creatures, Amen. new creations, and we offer baptism here as well. Amen. Amen. Also, if you say, you know what, I'm, I'm dedicated to God, I'm walking with Him, I've been baptized, but I don't have a church home, I don't have a church family, and you've been listening on the word, you're probably a serial guest out there. Yeah. We want to wrap you in our arms and say, Welcome home. We want to welcome you here to every walk of life. A place where it's a safe place and it's God's house. That's one of our pillars. So we, if you say, I need a church home, drop in the comments and say, I'm interested in Ewa. I'm interested in um, having calling Ewa my home. And we will have someone to reach out to you and give you more information about our, um, our ministry. Yes, if you say, hey, I'm good in all those areas. I have all those things. But I just need prayer. Yeah. I just need prayer for strength. Prayer to be renewed. Prayer to be revived. Prayer for this journey. Um, it might be weighing me down a little bit, or just prayer for focus. Man, it could be any area that you feel like you need a uh, uh, touch from God in. We can help you with that area and pray for you. We have a prayer team here that is willing and ready to help pray with you or whatever it is. It might be even an unspoken request, something that you might not be ready to talk about yet. We can still pray for guidance for that from God directly to you, okay? So we're a team. We're here for you. Amen. Amen. We don't want you to leave without giving you the opportunity have the opportunity right now to give through the worship. It's a worship, honestly, in your when you give. So whatever amount that God lays on your heart right now, we ask you just text that amount to 813-544-2495. Again, that number will pop up on your screen. Just text any amount to 813-544-2495. And we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, next Sunday, whenever you're watching this again. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Love you guys. Bye.